Good morning. Welcome to service this morning. Uh, if we were having services in person, there would be quite some hazard trying to get to the church today because there's a lot of snow. So I hope you're all safe and secure in this winter storm. For me, actually, this just seems like normal winter weather, but coming to Victoria, I've realized quite a few people are insecure about it. So I'm all praying for everyone. I'm going to be praying this morning for everybody needs safety on the roads. Uh, just because, well, a lot of people are not equipped to deal with a lot of snow. But today we're recognizing an important day. So, happy Valentine's Day! Or to everyone who is like me, happy Singles Awareness Day. But uh, liturgically, we're going to be looking at the transfiguration of our Lord. The transfiguration being when uh, Jesus with Peter, James, and John goes to a mountain and then displays his divinity to his disciples. Slide. So rather than, uh, since basically everyone involved in our choir program, except for Theo, who's managing the clicker, since everyone is not here to play music, we won't have a prelude, but we, uh, but we will still have a hymn. Um, we'll, the liturgy will be spoken, even though there will be uh, musical notes, we'll just speak through the liturgy. But when it comes to the hymn, we'll have a video on YouTube playing so that, that we can at least follow along. So, without further ado, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in whose mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. As a call and response, I 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the Transfiguration comes from Exodus chapter 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone, because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray the first part of Psalm 50. Mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, out of Zion the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the third and fourth chapters. Since we have such hope, we are very bold. 
Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would condemn ourse or commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue with the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia, you are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now the children's message for the kids and those who are young at heart. At least try to be young at heart, myself included. I just had a birthday, so I need, I need all the kidness I can. So a very basic thing. Uh, light bulb. When the light is off, it's dark, you can't see much. You might be able to see a little bit if there's some light in the room, but odds are things, mm, you can't see them too well. But when the light is on, when you turn a light on and have the light spread out throughout the room, you can see a lot more. Now, change light. Take Jesus. When people are looking at Jesus, they just see him as a human being, a man like any other. And sometimes people just don't see Jesus in God's light. People just assume who Jesus is based on what they see. But when God's light shines through Jesus, change slide. When God's light shines through Jesus Christ, 
You can see the glory of God within Jesus being spread out to all people everywhere. It's as if somebody flipped on a light switch in the transfiguration. In the transfiguration, Jesus showed three of his disciples who he truly was by having the light of his divinity, the light of his godhood, shine out among all people. Now, this is an impressive story, but what does it mean for us? Well, it does mean that we can see in Jesus Christ the person of God, so we can have a better knowledge of God through the light of Jesus shining. But it also means that when Jesus shows us God's glory working through him, he is showing what he does for us. So when we are standing in the presence of Jesus, when we are in the presence of Jesus in his word and in his sacraments, we have the light of his glory shine upon us. So this does not mean that we merely have a better view of Jesus Christ, but this also means that we have the light of glory shone upon us so that we might be seen in a better light. We who were sinners doing evil within the world, we had the light of God's glory shine upon us to forgive us our sins so we are no longer sinners but saints in God's sight, those made perfect and holy to God. So now we shine with the glory of God. Jesus Christ has shown the glory of God upon us so that we might too have this glory of God in our lives, shining forth in the forgiveness of all our sins so that we might too witness the truth of Jesus' Godhood to all people everywhere. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for coming from heaven to earth to show us who God truly is. Please, Lord, shine your glory upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into new life so that we might be uh, illuminated, enlightened by your glory, and live as God's beloved children. In your name, O Jesus, we pray. Amen. Since we do not have musical accompaniment this morning, I'm going to play a video off of YouTube to accompany all these words. Uh, this is from Concordia, University of Chicago, with their wind ensemble, so that uh, we can follow along with thy strong word.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the service last week, we were talking about how Jesus Christ shows us what to preach in the gospel by himself living the gospel. Uh, this is God the Son coming down from heaven to earth to be embodied as one of us, to suffer all the evils of this world and deliver us from sin upon his cross. Jesus is fully God and fully man, and as God-man, Jesus shows us who God truly is when we see our Lord loving us to the point of death on a cross in order to save us. And in the transfiguration of Jesus, we see the divinity of the God-man poke through in all its glory. The disciples, Peter, James, and John, witness the man, Jesus, who they have known for over a year at this point at least, suddenly transformed before them. His glory shone forth as light upon them. The disciples could see the true glory of God in the flesh of Jesus Christ. Unveiled before them was the light of light and Lord of lords. And it is this God who was also a man who would die on the cross for the sins of all and be raised from the dead. Baptized into Christ's death, we are dead to sin once for all, and we are raised into newness of life. This is the gospel of Christ. To see Christ, to witness him, is to see the gospel. To be in Christ by faith is to live in the salvation given to you by the gospel. You are glorified by the gospel because it applies to your heart the glory of Christ, which our Lord places within you by faith. This is how Paul phrases things in our reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, when he says that the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ has shone in our hearts. The light of the gospel has shone within you, so that by the word of grace God speaks to you through the gospel. You are saved and brought into the glory of Christ. The word of the gospel spoken to you who cleaved the darkness of sin from your flesh to transform you into a bearer of Christ's glory. In former times, as sinners without the light of Christ, you were doomed to darkness under the Old Covenant. That is, the covenant of God's law delivered through Moses. Without the light of Christ delivering you into the glory of God by having you bear the glorious image of Christ, you lived under the law which condemns you. When we read of the Transfiguration from the Gospel of Mark, you, could, you can see that Moses stands as one of the two Old Testament figures accompanying a glorified Jesus. Jesus has the glory of salvation shine from him, but Moses had another type of glory. You see, there was a time back in the Old Testament when Moses' face would shine with the glory of God because the Lord God spoke to Moses. This is described in our reading from Exodus chapter 34 this morning. Moses went up to Mount Sinai, heard the voice of the Lord proclaiming his laws, and would descend to tell the Israelites this law of the Lord. As he spoke, the glory of the Lord, which Moses received, shone upon his face. And this was a reflected glory. It was God's glory, but it was a glory that would ultimately fade. The law of God, which we find in the Old Testament and even the law of the Lord Jesus spoke of during his time on earth. This law is glorious. It shows to us the will of our Father in heaven and orders our lives so that we may love our neighbors as ourselves and strive to be as perfect as our Heavenly Father. So there is a glory under the law, but it is a glory that fades. This is because the law does not save you, but condemns you. As you strive to be perfect 
as God, or striving to be as perfect as Christ, doing all that is within you, so that by your power you may love your neighbor and your God. It becomes evident that your law and works are lacking. And what I mean is, well, is everything you've done perfect? Have you perfectly loved your neighbor? Or often enough, or far too often enough? Have we come to act out of frustration or anger toward our neighbors and fall short of the glory of God? The glory of God that shines forth from the law is there and we try to live in it. But when you sin, sin covers your heart and makes you lose sight of God's glory. This is what happened to the Israelites at the time of Moses, whose hearts were blinded by sin. The only way for you, like them, to have the glory of God shining within you is not to, to rely on a glory you can win for yourself under the law, for the law always condemns. But we, need, we must rely on a glory that comes from God himself, a glory that is itself eternal. And in order to have a glory that endures everlastingly, you must have the glory of Christ given to you by his gospel. The gospel of Christ is his salvation, which illuminates you. The darkness of sin once enveloped you and obscured your sight as if you were hidden behind a veil. But the truth of the gospel shines the light of Christ to eat up the darkness of sin. As no darkness can withstand light, no sin can remain in the forgiveness of Christ. When you find that you have fallen short of the glory of God, that you have not lived perfectly as the Lord's law commands, and also as other people seem to demand, still the glory of Christ shines upon you. His perfection, his glory, falls upon you even when you fall short of God's glory. More than this, the glory of Christ is the glory of God. Christ shows you his true divinity in the transfiguration, where he is transformed in the sight of his disciples. It is the glory of God that Christ shines and which you receive. It is a glory that transforms you. When you are in the glory of God, you are transformed to have a new glory. The glory of Christ shining forth from your heart. You are transformed to be like Christ. In the sight of your Father in heaven, you are a light of Christ. He sees the glory of Christ dwelling within you and loves you as one who is as perfect as Christ. Of course, we know each one of us has fallen short of the glory of God, but the glory of God still illuminates you so that you might shine forth the glory of Christ into the world. This gospel truth has saved you. You are not judged according to your failures under the law, but according to the glory of Christ given to you by his gospel. You need not fear being condemned by your God, for the Lord has taken away the darkness of sin that hung upon you. This does not mean that you need never follow the law, only that you do not suffer being condemned by it. As long as we are in the sinfulness, sinfulness of the flesh, we commit sins. Saying we are without sin is deceiving ourselves. But the truth of the gospel should expose this error and show us that we are those who are in continuous need of the glory of Christ, receiving his forgiveness always. It is not that we are glorious of ourselves, but that we glory and continue to glory in the light of Christ. This glory of Christ given to us is a mercy. We have not deserved it, but 
the glory of Christ is always given to those who do not deserve it. In Christ you shine with the glory of Christ, not a glory that comes from your own love or works. The glory of our love and works are darkened by sin. But the love of Christ and his works for you are what shine upon you and through you, shining through the darkness of your own sin to bring the light of God to you and to others. Now, helping others is not proof of the gospel dwelling within you, for even unbelievers help others. Your proof of the gospel working within you is the word of God which declares that Christ has forgiven your sins and cleansed you from all unrighteousness. You have true assurance of God's glory transforming you in the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. The light you shine is not your own, but the glory of Christ which is continually poured upon you in abundance. When the glory of Christ outshines everything in this world, you have no need to try and overshadow it by attempting to prove your faith by your works. Instead, the, glory, the gospel of Christ declares to you that you are saved by grace through faith. And of course, there are those with a strong faith and those with a weak faith. And if anyone who is in Christ and is tempted to sin by the weakness of their own flesh, help them. As Christ shown his glory upon you to save you from your sin, shine the light of Christ into the lives of those who need him, that they may not continue in sin, but leave the darkness of sin, and live in Christ's glory. Until we enter into paradise, where there is no need for a sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates everything, let us shine with the light of Christ in this world, spreading the truth of the gospel, so the light of Christ can cleave away the darkness of sin from all people. After Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the disciples spread abroad and told all people about the glory of Christ, including the miraculous transfiguration where Jesus shone with the glory of God. This was so all people may have the glory of Christ transforming them from the darkness of sin to the glory of Christ. This gospel of Christ's glory, saving us from our sins, has made us shine. And we desire for the whole world not to live hidden away from this light, but join us in Christ, so that all people everywhere may live in Christ's glory forever. Amen. In the peace that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, in, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for God's people and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the schools and all colleges, universities, and centers of research, and those who teach and work in them. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state, and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your blessing remain upon the sea time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. And we ask, O Lord, that you be with all those who have to navigate hazardous roadways today, that you keep them safe and secure in your care, and that everyone is able to take up and once again the commerce and industry you have placed before them. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all that mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially this morning we, we remember Chris, Margaret, Hildegard, Gail, Judith, Erica, Ella, Evelyn, Alma, Jean, Bruce, Laura, Linnea, Richard, and David. And all those we name in our hearts now. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow, and grant to all a measure of your love taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the promises of our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. 
forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. There are a few different announcements. Um, going forth in the next couple of weeks, there are the same types of services. So this would be a Bible study, Sunday worship services. Uh, what will end up happening from Ash Wednesday on is the devotional services will change. There will no longer be ones at 9.30 in the morning, except on Tuesday. There will be one 9.30 a.m. Tuesday and also one at 12.30 every time that I'm in the office and available to do one in the office here at the church. But that will change. Uh, the Bible study this morning it will not be posted on, on YouTube uh, because it was not recorded because only a couple people were able to join, so we just talked about a few different things and uh, looked into a couple different Bible passages. So uh, we'll resume... Uh, the Lutheran Theological Bible Study next week. Uh, coming up, Ash Wednesday, there will be a pre-recorded service for Ash Wednesday, so you could can see that on our YouTube channel, or if you don't have don't know how to navigate to that, on the church's Facebook page, there will be a link to that YouTube. Uh, recording. Uh, the reason why it's being recorded and not live streamed is because this is how the other pastors in on the island have been doing it. So when I'm because I'm pairing with them to do services for the midweeks in Lent, uh, all of us are going to be pre-recording our services, uh, hopefully having them up by Tuesday on YouTube, and then uh, I will have the link to you on Wednesday so that. Uh, you can go to the church's, Hope Lutheran Church's, Facebook page, and you can see a link to the Wednesday service, uh, whoever might have the service that week. Uh, it's divided between Hope Lutheran here in Victoria and also uh, Nanaimo, Campbell River, and Port Alberni. So we'll be doing a bit of pulpit exchange as each one of us takes a week. Um, but also, Ash Wednesday, here in this building, Ash Wednesday, you can sign up for the imposition of ashes and, and communion. So this is going to be a 20-minute service. I'm offering these at half-hour blocks. So you'll uh, come here, go into the service, 20 minutes, and that will give you enough time to leave, enough time for me to try and uh, sanitize an area, and then the next people can come in. Uh, I've only had a few people who have taken me up so far, or at least scheduled an appointment. So there's still lots of appointment times still available. So evening, morning, noon, uh, whenever you're available, uh, please schedule an appointment. Uh, I'll try not to work over eight hours, but uh, I'm just stuck out when there's a huge gap in the time slot. So uh, this is all according to your schedule. Uh, mine, my schedule is flexible. Please, whenever you have... Uh, Whichever time you prefer, please contact me and I'll try and slot you in for an appointment. Um, also coming up, Sunday, February 28th, is the quarterly congregational meeting. So Sunday, February 28th. Uh, because the restrictions are indefinite at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is just going to be by a Zoom meeting. So we'll do what we did before, send out a link with the email for the service that that week, and uh, that will be distributed to everybody by their email. Uh, there's also a phone number that you can call so that you can join the meeting, uh, but you do have to pay uh, a fee for, uh, I, I think it's about a little over six cents a minute uh, to use the phone to get in the meeting. Um, hmm. Last but not least, as I was 
as I, as I was reminded during our hymn with all the hallelujahs in there, uh, we're going to be entering into Lent this Wednesday, so we're going to be putting away the white, we're going to bring out the penitential purple, and as per tradition, we will forgo saying hallelujah or hallelujah within the services. We are uh, saving those joyous words for Easter Sunday and going forth in penitence, extra study, extra reflection. Uh, if you have not read the newsletter, I suggest you do so. There's a little bit in there where I talk about different things you can try for Lent, uh, such as devotions, looking into extra services, the midweek services. Um, also, just trying something new for Lent that you have not done before. So if you're familiar with the Bible's Bible story, and you would really enjoy that Bible story, try it in a different way. Maybe try to find a movie clip or something of it so that you can connect with it in a different way. Or maybe a, a, a music music clip of it, or because there are many, many uh, incidents in Scripture that have been put to music. But... Uh, I think that is all the announcements. So that, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.